tangent to the circle at point B. So it, the whole line segment's a, a tangent, uh, but this is a tangent segment, a part of a tangent. Uh, there's also something we call the secant segment in class. So from example, to point A all the way over to here to this point is a secant segment. Uh, same thing here from this point to A is also a secant segment. And then there's also a couple of chords. Chords, if you remember, begin, for example, on point B and end on the circle. And actually, part of this secant segment is a chord, too, if I'm beginning here uh, and going all the way over to here. This is a, a chord as well. Um, so some of the relationships that e exist uh, amongst chords and, and, uh, and such in a, tr in, a, in, in a circle like this. Um, oops. Um, for example, if, if this was uh, A units long and this was B units long, and this was C units long, and this is D units long. The relationship with the chords is the, the products of these parts are actually equal. Um, and you could demonstrate this with the uh, with the dynamic software. And, and really the reason why it's happening is actually because of some similar triangles. There's some ratios here that are being held constant, and there's this vertical angle. But um, the product of AB will always equal the product of CD in this case for this diagram. Uh, and when I look at that, I can say, well, for, as far as chords go, if I knew what uh, y was, or if I knew what x is, I could find the other one, x or y. Because I, I can say that uh, 6 times x is equal to 8 times y. Uh, that's not going to be enough to help uh, solve this problem at the beginning, but it's something I'm going to be able to probably use later on. Um, and a, another thing that I, I think we can do, and I think this is probably going to help begin this problem, is looking at what happens with uh, tangent segments. So, for example, um, I have this, uh, I, I won't use uh, this, I won't use these letters. Oops. But, for example, this is the, this is the letter A, that's so nice. I'll label this with a cute little A. Uh, so this, this uh, tangent segment I've labeled A. And the, I have two pieces then that, that are being cut by this tangent segment, right? There's one that's a B, and the other one I can label here is, is C. Oops. And I don't know why I'm actually labeling it like this. I'm just, uh, I feel like Mr. Roberts, we're tired. Um, C. So what the relationship states when you've got like this uh, tangent segment and uh, the secant segment um, is a squared, right? This the tangent segment squared uh, will equal the product of the entire secant segment. So uh, the C and B together, right? C plus B uh, times the external part here, the uh, the, the the B. Right, so you're going to see that that's immediately going to help me find a couple a couple things here. So I can find z f first, for example. So if I want, I can begin with 5 root 3 squared. 5 root 3, and I'm going to square this quantity, meaning I'll multiply this by itself, uh, will equal... I haven't left myself enough room here. Uh, will equal... Uh, z plus 6, that's the whole secant segment uh, from here to here, times the external part, times 6. Um, so when I uh, go ahead and solve this, let me clean up this house. I don't need you anymore. And uh, we don't need this either. Um... Uh, this, if I square this, meaning multiplying it by itself, just to write it out, I get 5 root 3 times another 5 root 3. So real simply, this is 25, and root 3 times root 3 is 3. So this is 25 times 3, or 75. And then over here we have, uh, using the distributive property, 6z plus 36. Um, if we go ahead and subtract 36 from both sides of this equation, um, we end up getting that uh, 39 
is equal to uh, 6z. Again, I have equal things, and I subtract uh, equal things, 36 from each side of it. I get equal things. And then if I simplify, this z is, well, it's 13 halves, or you can write it as 6.5, 6 and a 1 half. Okay, so, and I could do exactly the same thing uh, to find, let's see, well, it's, it's similar to it. I can do pretty much the same thing to figure out how big x is. And then once I know x, I can use the relationship among these two chords to find y. I'll, I'll at least set up the equation to find x. To find x, it's going to be given the same way. I'm going to start with my secant segment squared. So again, 5 root 3, and we will square that. And that will equal, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to look at the entire secant segment. So it's an x plus a 6 plus a 5 or x plus 11. And then I'm going to multiply that by the external part, so times this 5. <clears throat> uh, so again, squaring five, 5 root 3, you can see we, we got it right here. That is 75. 5 root 3, 5 root 3 is 75. Uh, and then I have over here 5x plus 55. And when we subtract 55 from both sides, we get that uh, 20 over here. 55 or 75 minus 55 is 20. And when I subtract the 55 here, I'm left with 5x. So 20 equals 5x. Therefore, uh, x is equal to the number 4. So now I know that this x is indeed the number 4. And I, I know that uh, z, I forgot to write it on here, was 6.5. And the last uh, question is, what's what's y? It's pretty straightforward now because they're chords. So I know 4 times 6 equals y times 8. And if I solve that, I should get that y is equal to 3. Okay, for this uh, next problem, I was asked about question number 6. Uh, I'm going to begin by filling in things that I know to be true. Um, at the end of the day, we want to know the length, or I'm sorry, the measure of several arcs, arc B, G, E, F, D, E, and the measure of angle 1. In addition, we want to know the measures of angles uh, 2 through 6. So there's a lot of things that we want here. And rather than focus on any one of those, I'm just going to look at this and figure out uh, things that I know to be true. Um, for example, I'm told that F, D is a di uh, diameter. So that tells me that it's dividing this circle into two semicircles. Um, and in fact, if I have 40 degrees here uh, and 80 degrees here, that's 120 degrees. Plus another 20 degrees is uh, 140. Um, so I, I need to get up to 80. So that tells me that uh, arc uh, BG has to be 40 degrees. Right? And the reason why that has to be 40 degrees is it's it's part of a semicircle. So again, 40 plus 80 plus 40 plus 20 is 180 degrees. Um, that that uh, is going to be useful for finding, uh, for example, the measure of angle 1, because I'll be able to do that now. Um, and, and maybe I should start filling in things, because I don't, I don't know about this EF. EF. The measure of arc EF. I think it's going to take me a while to get there. Um, so let's fill in, uh, I guess, what I know here. Well, this this angle right here intersects my circle in two different spots, this 40 and this 80. And I know that this angle is one half of the difference of these inter intercepted arcs. The difference of these intercepted arcs is 40 degrees. Um, so if this is this is 80 minus 40 gives me 40, and half of that gives me 20. So angle 1 has to be 20 degrees. Um, now this little arc on this circle right here is 20, and I know that this arc over here is 40, so it's the exact same thing. This angle 2 has to be half the difference of the intercepted arcs. So if I take 40 and subtract 20, I'm given, I get 20, and then half of that would give me 10. So angle 2 should equal 10 degrees. Um, <clears throat> let's just keep going. That seems like it's working for us. Uh, angle 3 is an inscribed angle, and as such, it should equal um, one half of its intercepted arc. The problem is I don't know 
the length of arc DE yet. Right? That's one of the things it's going to ask me to find. I don't have that yet. Um, let's let's do this. Uh, I don't know that angle either. Okay, this is an observation. Uh, since I know this is 10 degrees, um, and also because this is 65, um, I can figure out the measure of this particular angle. Uh, if I take a, a 180 degrees, 180, and I subtract 65 degrees from it, you can see because uh, these two angles, this angle and the one right next to it are a linear pair, they have to be supplementary, so six, uh, 180 minus 65, again, 10, 10 minus 5 is 5. Uh, this is now 7 minus, 7 minus 6 is 1, and bring down the 1. So this is 115 degrees. This angle uh, H, right, with, is right here is 115 degrees. I'm going to write 115 right on it, just as a memory. It's funny, that H. So if I look at this triangle now, I've got a 10-degree angle. I have a 115 degree angle, so together that's 125, 125. And I know that the three angles uh, of a triangle have to add up to 180, so that's going to give me a way of describing how big angle 6 is. So if I take 180 degrees and subtract the 125, 10 minus 5 is 5, uh, 8 minus, um, I'm sorry, that's 7, 7 minus 2 is 5. And uh, one minus so this is angle six is 55 degrees. Now, wh why is that useful? Well, it turns out this arc from right here at point G, all the way to E, has to be twice 55. So it has to be 110. Now that's not the length of arc FE. That's that's from this G all the way to E. So what I'm looking at here is I'm doubling this, which gives me the 110. And I'm going to subtract 20 degrees from it, which is this part right here. Uh, 110 minus 20 uh, should mean that this is 90 degrees. So I now know the length of arc Fe, which is one of the questions. That's great. And because I know that, I also know the arc length of arc Ed, right? Um, if this is if this is going to be um, if this is a diameter, it's a semicircle. 90 plus another 90 is 180. So Arc ED is also 90 degrees. <clears throat> and I think pretty much things are falling into place now, right? I know that angle 5 has to be one half the measure of its intercepted arc, so angle 5 has to be 45 degrees. Uh, and for the exact same reason, angle 3, which is an inscribed angle, is one half the measure of its intercepted arc, so it has to be 45 degrees also. And I can see a triangle here from F to E to D. Um, <laughs> and actually, I should know this anyways. Anytime that you have a triangle inscribed in a semicircle, you can see it's going to make a right angle. So <clears throat> because why? Because, well, it's half the measure of its intercepted arc. And a semicircle is always 180 degrees. So, And also, it's very nice to know that, uh, hey, 45, 45 with a triangle, this has to be 90. So these three add up to 180. So. We now have our, um, I think, just about everything that we were asked to find. So let me list list our answers here, and I'll go ahead and write them in a different color ink. So the length of arc BG is 40 degrees. Uh, the length of arc EF is 90 degrees. The length of arc DE is 90 degrees. The measure of angle 1 is 20 degrees. The measure of angle 2 was 10 degrees. <clears throat> the measure of angle 3 is 45 degrees. The measure of angle 4 is, ah, mm, uh, that's interesting. 4 I don't have yet, do I? I know that that whole thing is 90, but I don't have this part listed yet. Uh, the measure of angle 5 is 45 degrees. The measure of angle 6 Trying to see where the six was. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that this is what, yeah, there it is. It's right there. The measure of angle six is 55 degrees. Oops. 